Hi, uh, my name is Ranis. Uh, I work for uh, Softhouse as a consultant, uh, but right now I'm uh, working for Sony Mobile on uh, their live load service, uh, which I don't know if you've heard anything about, but it's the, these bracelets that some of us are wearing today. Uh, and I'm writing, or I'm architect and developer for the uh, backend. So uh, Sony, well, I'm there because Sony needed my help, essentially. So I'm first going to discuss a bit about what the LifeLog backend is and how it's built. And then I'm going to go into the encryption key management on uh, Amazon Web Services, which is one of the issues we encountered during development. So it's, of course, running on Amazon Web Services. It's built in Java uh, with the Spring framework. And it's using Gradle, which is a rather new uh, build system. Uh, it's similar to uh, Ant and Maven, if some of you are familiar with those. And we're using some sort of hybrid between Scrum and Kanban. I think we're closing in on using <coughs> Scrum, but it's been very turbulent, so we've more or less been running Kanban for the latest few weeks. Um, the reason we're using Java Spring Framework and Gradle is more or less because uh, I got to do whatever I wanted to do, and those were the tools I chose. So, which is good, because um, since I was one of the first in to actually develop a, a backend server at Sony Mobile, I got to pick my tools and hopefully everyone else will have to follow my footsteps. Well, we'll see about that in the future. What I'm here to talk about is actually, I seem to have lost the slide here. Uh, the title slide should be, was supposed to be here as well. But I'm gonna talk about uh, encryption key management on Amazon Web Services. And I'm gonna start with trust, because we need to trust a few people for this to work. Uh, if we're running everything in the cloud, we need to trust Amazon which hosts our cloud. If we, can't, if we can't trust Amazon, we can't protect our data because they're the ones actually holding the data. And we have to trust our administrators because if we can't trust the administrators, they're the ones who has, actually has the encryption keys. Someone needs to upload the encryption keys and if you can't trust your administrators, you can't secure your data. So these two are more or less the only people we actually have to trust. And if we do that, we can do encryption in a few different ways. We can do it with uh, server-integrated encryption, which means that the server handles all encryption. We just turn on a flag and we get encryption for free, more or less. This is available on a few of Amazon services. Uh, some of the uh, RDS services, uh, Microsoft SQL, Oracle, uh, Elastic MapReduce, which is built on top of all the other, so it's not really a service on its own. Uh, Amazon S3, Glacier, and Redshift. Those are the ones that are actually, you can turn on encryption and don't do anything and you will have encrypted data at rest. Uh, you can also have uh, encryption which is integrated in the client, and this is only available on Amazon S3 in the Java and Ruby implementations. Or we can encrypt everything ourselves which means that we can, we can encrypt more or less anything we store on any service. Uh, it's, I mean, you can, if you want to encrypt it and store it somewhere, you can encrypt it if you manually encrypt it. And this is what I'm going to talk about because that's, that's where we have to handle our own encryption keys. And when you, we do manual encryptions, there is a strategy called envelope encryption, which is it's basically that you encrypt your data with a key, uh, most often a temporary key. It can be a, a um, data object specific key or a, a key that rotates around the system. But uh, we use a temporary key and then we encrypt our data and then we encrypt the temporary key with a, another encryption key and we store the encrypted encryption key somewhere else, uh, either in a separate database or we can store it alongside the encrypted data. And when we decrypt our data, we decrypt the encryption key with our master key and then use the decrypted key to decrypt the data. 
this is called envelope encryption because well, it's a analogy where you put an envelope inside an envelope inside an envelope. You can take this as far as you want, but let's stop at one level here. So we have a, a master key that we encrypt our temporary keys with, and we use the temporary keys to encrypt our data. And that means that even if one of these temporary keys are compromised, you can only decrypt the data that is encrypted with that key. So all other data is still safe. The only thing you have to protect here is the master key. If the master key is compromised, you're screwed. So you can use these temporary keys for key rotation and whatever scheme you want. And we need to have secure handling of master keys, which is what I will cover. The temporary keys can be treated as any form of encrypted data. You can store them in plain, th uh, you can store them everywhere. You can give them away freely because since they're encrypted, no one can do anything with them. So how do we manage our master keys then? We have, or Amazon have, a uh, service called Cloud, Cloud HSM, which is basically a uh, dedicated hardware module that you purchase the right to use, and then you pay for how much you use it. It's supposed to be uh, tamper-free, which means that if someone actually tries to break in it physically inside a data center, it wipes the memory, the caches, everything, and the keys are destroyed, and you have to have them backed up at your place, otherwise all your data is lost. This is, um, I'm not gonna talk too much about this because it's a uh, rather specific solution. It's the better solution, but it's also really expensive. Uh, we can use other services with server-side encryption. Uh, we can store our master keys on Amazon S3, for example, uh, which has server-side encryption. So we store our keys and let Amazon handle encryption and key rotation for the master key. Or we can use uh, asymmetrical encryption with uh, RSA. And we can use uh, the identity access management built into Amazon Web Services to store our uh, keys. I will talk more about the later one because that's the more interesting one, I think. But I will cover the other two briefly. So we have Cloud SSM. It's a uh, dedicated hardware module which you communicate with from your web servers or app servers or whatever you have. Uh, it integrates with a lot of different protocols, uh, a lot of standardized protocols. So. Essentially, what you get from it is you get your encryption key, uh, which is stored securely so no one else but you can access it. You use the encryption key in the envelope encryption scheme, and then you discard it. And if you need it again, you request, you request it again. So all encryption happens here. You get the key, you encrypt your data, and you store it on. Yeah, I'm just using Amazon DynamoDB because that's what we're using in uh, LifeLog. Uh, it's supposed to be very, very secure. Um, it, I mean, you, Amazon vouches that it's tamper-free, so no one can break into your uh, security module and steal your keys. So I guess it's secure, but it's also very expensive. Uh, I think it costs $5,000 upfront for one uh, security module. Then it costs around $1,400 every month just to have it running. And I have no idea how much one of these modules actually, how long they last. If you have to use three or four or five or even 10, I have no idea. But I think it's, it's quite expensive. So I think this is the proper solution, but it's also the most expensive solution. So if you're a small startup, you're probably not going to go with this one. Uh, the next one is server-side encryption on the Amazon services. Uh, we have, for example, S3, where we can store our keys. And we get basically the same scheme as we have with the hardware security module. We uh, store our keys, we request our keys, we get them over a secure channel, and then we do the encryption and store the encrypted data in our database. Uh, the thing here is that we can have more or less how many keys we want. It's cheap. I mean, S3 is, I think, one of the cheapest services to utilize on uh, Amazon. Um, you rely on Amazon's internal key management, which I suppose is good. They dis 
disclose very little about how they actually manage their encryption keys for the server-side encryption. Uh, all they say is it's, it's secure and rotated. So you'll have to trust Amazon if you're using this scheme. Uh, it's very flexible because uh, you can store more or less everything encrypted on S3. So you decide what you store, where you store it. You can use uh, MSSQL or Oracle, any of the uh, services with server-side encryption, you can use here. But the big question is if it is really secure. Because if you have access to the files in the bucket, if you have the proper access control, you can access your encryption keys. So to actually restrict access to your encryption keys, you have to restrict access. You can't grant access because everything who is an administrator will get access to Amazon S3. Everyone who has full read access to S3 can read your encryption keys. So you have to close down on who can, re who can use your encryption keys. And that can be a potential security risk because it's very hard to remember to actually remove access to the encryption key bucket whenever you give someone access to S3. So access control becomes a hassle if you go with this solution. And then we have the asymmetrical encryption with Amazon uh, uh, Identity Access Management, which is the interesting one, I think. It uses uh, RSA encryption. We have, a, uh, we have uh, uh, IAM here, where we store a signing certificate. This is not really what it's intended to be used for, but we can use it for this. I think it's quite clever. So we, we store our signing certificate here. It is a uh, self-signed uh, X509 certificate, which contains a uh, public key. And then we encrypt our uh, encryption keys with the private key that is uh, related to the uh, certificate, and we store them wherever we want to. Because they're encrypted with RSA, you need the public key, which is stored in IAM, to actually decrypt the key. So you can store them in uh, the configuration files, you can store them anywhere, basically, because if you can access the encrypted key, you can't do anything with it. You need the uh, certificate, which is only available through IAM. And what we do then, we take the uh, encrypted key, we put it into RSA decryption, we decrypt it, and then we get the master key, which we use for uh, envelope encryption in here. And then everything is the same. And this is flexible. You can store, I mean, you have to use IAM, unless you can find some other way of secure, securely storing your uh, certificates. But the uh, database for storing the keys, you can use anything you want to. You can have them on a web server, you can have them on S3, you can have them in DynamoDB, you can have them more or less anywhere. You can have them in your, uh, your launch configuration for your web servers. Because you can't do anything with them without the certificate. It's cheap because, as far as I know, it doesn't actually cost anything to make requests to uh, access management. So you don't pay anything for this transfer. And depending on what service you use, you have to pay for transfers here. But it will be a quite negligible cost. It relies on uh, access management and RSA, both of which are, since we're trusting Amazon in this scenario, we can trust that IAM is secure. Otherwise, nothing is secure because IAM is the backbone of control on Amazon. It controls what you can do, what everyone else can do with your resources. So if you can't trust that, you really can't trust Amazon. And RSA is, as far as I know, proven, and everyone it trusts it. Uh, we use it everywhere. Uh, and I think you can even go and use uh, elliptic curve cryptography here if you're allowed to upload those kinds of certificates to IAM. I'm not sure you can, but you can use whatever asymmetric encryption available as long as you can store the certificate on access management. Uh, there is, however, a limited number of signing certificates. Uh, these are personal. 
uh, which is, means that they're bound to the user. Uh, they're not shared between user accounts, uh, but you can only have a limited number. I think it's two or three per user account. So if you want to do heavy key rotation or have multiple certificates, it gets a bit, it's limited, but shouldn't be that much of an issue. And the, big, the great thing is that they're limited to the user or role that has them. So even if I as an administrator can't access the signing certificate of a, another user, or uh, if you're running as you should be doing, running your servers, you have an access role set up for your servers. So that means that only servers running in that role can access the certificates. So you can't access the encryption keys unless you're a server, which is secure, I guess. And with this comes, if there's a few issues here, which is basically this. Uh, you're not paying for it, which means that it's probably not scaling that well. So we need to restrict how much we actually use uh, the IAM channel so we don't overload the system or we get too, ha too, too long uh, response times because that will decrease the performance of our servers. Uh, and for that we can use caching. We can either cache the uh, certificate or we can cache the decrypted master key. Uh, this is also one solution to an issue because RSA decryp decryption is rather slow, especially compared to uh, faster encryption schemes such as AES, which is considerably faster. You can cache your keys. Uh, or you can use envelope encryption, which we already are using, but we can use it in one level more. So we can reuse temporary keys, which means that we don't have to decrypt as many keys. Uh, instead of having one key per uh, object, we can have uh, one key per every hundred objects, perhaps. So we can, if we pull all those hundred objects, we only have to decrypt the key once. We can decrypt all the keys, all the uh, objects. Or we can use multiple levels of keys. So we can have one, one encryption key per object, and then we can have a temporary key that which we use to encrypt those keys, and then we encrypt that key with our master key. So we can have three levels, or we can have four levels. We can potentially have how many levels we want to, just to reduce, in this case, how many times we use RSA to decrypt our master key, because RSA is slow. Uh, when we first implemented our uh, LiveFlog service, we used RSA f to decrypt the key that we, we de encrypted every key with RSA, which wasn't an issue because RSA en encryption is quite fast. But when we came to actually decrypting data, we had, I think we had uh, somewhere around six milliseconds of decryption per object, which meant that the response times were huge. And we solved that by using envelope encryption in multiple levels. So now we have uh, a master key which is encrypted with RSA, which we in then use to encrypt the other keys, which improved performance by a few hundred percent, I think. And that's basically what I'm, that's all I have. Uh, I have a few questions that I can hope, I hope can start some discussions. And it's, if it's really safe, to run on a cloud provider. Is there any way you can actually prevent Amazon from accessing your keys? Because one way or the other, you have to upload your key to their servers. And if they really want to, they can just sniff your key when you're uploading it, and then they have your keys. Uh, and is it safe to cache encryption keys? Is it safe to store the keys in memory for a few seconds, a few minutes? Or should you destroy them as soon as you've used them? Should you just destroy them and get it again, potentially slowing your servers down? That's all I have. <laughs>